Germany is a country with many spectacular castles. Placed in strategic positions overlooking their lands, they're physical reminders of a long-gone age of knights and chivalry. Except some of them aren't as old as they look. The dawn of the 19th century saw the growth of Romanticism, a movement which turned to nature and the past as ideals, and this led to renewed interest in these old fortifications. Having previously gone out of fashion and been abandoned by their lords in favour of sprawling baroque palaces, people now began to appreciate their rugged beauty. As a result, castles attracted increasing numbers of tourists, and many princes and wealthy individuals returned to rebuild or to remodel them, inspired by fairy tales and a longing for past ages. In doing so, they created some of the most spectacular and awe-inspiring castles ever built, and here we'll be looking at the history and design of five of them. We begin with Hohenschwangau Castle, located at the foothills of the Alps in southern Bavaria, right next to the Austrian border. It was founded by the Knights of Schwangau, who had originally built two castles on a rugged hill overlooking the site sometime before the year 1090. By 1397, their descendants had constructed this more easily accessible castle nestled between two lakes below. In the 1500s, it came into the possession of a wealthy merchant who had it modernized by Italian craftsmen. Then, from 1567, it was owned by the Wittelsbach rulers of Bavaria, who used it for bear hunting, but having been neglected and then damaged by French bombardment in the Napoleonic Wars, it was finally sold for demolition in 1820. Luckily, the castle was saved by an enthusiast, and then ended up being bought by Crown Prince Maximilian of Bavaria in 1832, returning it to the royal family. Maximilian had fallen in love with the historic building and its scenic location while hiking in the area some years before, and decided to rebuild the dilapidated structure in neo-Gothic style. He entrusted his art teacher, the painter and stage designer Domenico Quaglio, with the project. The resulting building, with its distinctly medieval turrets and crenellated walls, make for a dramatic scene, and looks like the backdrop of a theatre turned to life. The interior was made to match this style, and was decorated with over 90 wall paintings depicting the history of the castle and a number of medieval German romances. By 1837, the initial transformation of the castle was finished, but as Maximilian married and his family grew, new rooms and buildings were added. Every summer, they spent several weeks here hunting, fishing, and going on mountain excursions. Records also tell of festivals, jousting games, and royal guests. Growing up in this environment had a great impact on his eldest son Ludwig, who would one day go on to create an even more ambitious castle. Ludwig II ruled over Bavaria from 1864 to 86, and has become known as the Fairy Tale King. Over the years, he increasingly withdrew from day-to-day -day affairs of state, and began to build his own fantasy world, funding extravagant palaces inspired by various time periods. The first of these projects that he embarked on was to build a medieval castle, a dream that he'd had ever since his childhood, when he'd visited the remains of the two older castles high above Hohenschwangau, and dreamt of one day rebuilding them. Having seen similar projects being carried out in France and other parts of Germany, and been inspired by the operas of Richard Wagner, he now intended to realize that dream. At first, the project was relatively modest, only one of the ruins was to be replaced by a modern building. But the plans grew ever more ambitious, and in the end took on palatial proportions. Ludwig employed another stage designer to make drafts, and an architect to realize the plans, but he himself was deeply involved in the design, keeping track of and commenting on even the smallest of details. In 1868, the ruins of the medieval twin castles, which for technical reasons couldn't be included in the new structure, were demolished, and the next year construction began on what would become known as Neuschwanstein Castle. 
During the following two decades, the project was the largest employer in the area, with as many as 300 people working directly on site at one point. By the end of Ludwig's reign, his dream castle was taking shape. A collection of structures had been built out of brick, encased in white limestone, and designed primarily in Romanesque style. A gatehouse, proudly displaying the royal coat of arms, is passed to enter a spacious courtyard, bound by buildings on all but one side and leading up to the Great Hall, which is where the king would have resided. This beautiful composition is not all that he had intended to build, though. In the middle of the spacious courtyard, there should have been a basilica and a 90 meter tall keep, and of the castle's more than 200 planned rooms, only 15 were ever finished. The largest of these was the 27 meter long Hall of Singers, followed by the somewhat smaller but nonetheless majestic throne room in Byzantine style. The king's private quarters were also finished, and although modest in size, no expense was spared in their decoration. For example, just his bed canopy took 14 carvers four years of work to complete. Following the king's death in 1886, parts of the castle that were under construction were finished in simplified form, and the complex was quickly opened to the public to pay off some of the late king's large debts. Since then, Neuschwanstein has continued to attract tourists, and is estimated to welcome the grand total of more than 60 million visitors. Leaving Bavaria behind, our next building is located in northern Germany, in what was once the Grand Duchy of Mecklenburg-Schwerin. In 1837, Grand Duke Paul Frederick decided to move the ducal residence back from the 70-year-old Ludwigslust Palace to his ancestral seat, Schwerin Castle. The founder of his dynasty, a Slavic chieftain called Niklot, owned a fort on the site in the 12th century, but lost it to German invaders. His son, who converted to Christianity, managed to regain many of Niklot's lands by becoming a German vassal, but it wouldn't be until 1358 that his descendants purchased back the county of Schwerin. Over the next centuries, the fort, strategically situated on a small island, was gradually developed into an imposing castle and then transformed into an extravagant Renaissance palace. By the time Paul Frederick moved back in, however, the building was showing its age. It was largely in poor condition, and hundreds of years of additions had made it into an incoherent agglomeration of many different styles. The Duke's answer to this problem was to build a new palace in a nearby garden, but just a few months after construction had begun, he passed away. His son, Frederick Francis II, took a very different approach, preferring to completely remodel the old castle. Having received design proposals from leading German architects, he had various aspects of them combined into a final plan, which took heavy inspiration from French Renaissance castles of the Loire Valley. Construction could begin in 1843, and by 1851, the radical transformation of the old castle into the gleaming building we see today was complete. Connected to the city of Schwerin by an elaborate arched bridge, the castle greets you with a grand entrance portal and an equestrian statue of the chieftain Niklot. Above is a monumental gilded dome, surrounded by towers and pinnacles rising towards the sky. With its many wings, the castle provides eye-catching views from every angle and is skillfully integrated into its gardens, which include an ornate orangery and a remodeled baroque garden with a cross-shaped canal reflecting the building in its waters. Inside are over 600 rooms, including the decadently ornamented throne room with columns made from Carrara marble and gilded cast-iron doors. Another highlight is the chapel, originally built in the 1500s and renovated in a neo-Gothic style in the 19th century. In 1918, the last duke was forced to abdicate and leave his home, but the castle his family built remains, and is considered to be one of the most important works of Romantic historicism in Europe.
The Rhineland in Western Germany is an area that became particularly famous during the Age of Romanticism for its dramatic scenery and many historic castles. One admirer was Crown Prince Frederick William of Prussia, who travelled through the area in 1815, the same year that it was awarded to his kingdom in the Congress of Vienna. Being newcomers to the Rhineland, the Prussian royal family were looking for ways to establish their legitimacy here in the early 19th century, and an opportunity to do this appeared in 1823, when the city of Koblenz awarded the ruined castle of Stolzenfels as a gift to the Crown Prince. Originally built around the year 1250 by the Prince Bishop of Trier, it was used as a toll castle until 1412. Over the years it was extended several times, but in the 17th century it was destroyed by the French and left as a ruin for the next 150 years. Wanting to show his presence in the area and to present himself as the rightful heir to the Rhenish noble families, Frederick William began to rebuild the castle in 1836, with the goal of turning it into a splendid summer residence. With the help of the famous architect Karl Friedrich Schinkel and his student Friedrich August Stühle, the ruin was turned into a neo-Gothic palace, in part inspired by Hohenschwangau Castle in Bavaria and by similar buildings in England. In 1843 the structure stood finished and was inaugurated with a medieval-themed costume ball. Over the next few years it was extended with a small neo-Gothic chapel, which in turn was inaugurated during a visit by Queen Victoria. Rising high above the River Rhine, the modern castle retains as much as possible of the original structure. The five-sided keep at its centre, for example, dates back all the way to the middle of the 14th century. The interior still retains the original furniture from the 1800s and includes rooms decorated with medieval knights' armour and paintings recalling the history of the area. Within the castle there is also a small garden shaped like a gothic rose window and the building is surrounded by a 9 hectare large landscaped park. Soon after it was finished, Stolzenfels Castle was opened to the public whenever the royal family wasn't using it, and it remains a popular destination today. In 1819, Prince Frederick William went on another journey, this time to Italy, and on his way there he travelled through what is now the state of Baden-Württemberg in southern Germany. There, he would get a chance to rediscover his roots, because on the top of a mountain near a town called Hechingen lay Hohenzollern Castle, the namesake and ancestral home of his family. Curious about his past, Frederick couldn't help but take the opportunity to pay a visit, and having completed the arduous climb to the peak of the Zollerberg, almost 900 meters above sea level, the prince was captivated by the ruins he found there. The castle, which is believed to have been founded in the 11th century, was described in the Middle Ages as a vast and artistically impressive structure, with the sources praising it as the crown of all castles in the region of Swabia. This first castle, however, was completely destroyed in 1423, after a year-long siege by the Swabian League of Cities. A few decades later, a new, stronger castle was built in its place, but during the Thirty Years' War, the House of Hohenzollern lost ownership of it, and it would for a long time be controlled by the Habsburgs. After the last Austrian garrison left in 1798, the castle fell into disrepair, and by the time Frederick William visited, only the chapel was left in decent condition. The visit left a lasting impression on him, and writing in 1844, by which time he had become King of Prussia, he noted that, quote, The memory of the year 1819 to me is exceedingly lovely and like a beautiful dream, especially the sunset we saw for one of the castle bastions. Now is the desire, a dream of my youth, to see Hohenzollern Castle again made habitable. The House of Hohenzollern had once been split into two branches, one Protestant that came to be centred around Prussia, and another Catholic based in Swabia in southern Germany. In realising his dream, Frederick William would collaborate with his Swabian kinsmen, and through joint financing build a common monument to their dynasty. Friedrich August Stiele, who had previously worked on Stolzenfels Castle and would be one of the architects involved in the design of Schwerin Castle as well, was appointed to draw up a plan for the project in 1846. Like in his previous work, the design was stylistically influenced by neo-Gothic buildings in England and by the castles of the Loire Valley in France. Construction began in 1850, 
and the third castle of Hohenzollern stood finished in 1867. This building is guarded by high walls and bastions and entered through the Eagle Gate, featuring an attached drawbridge. Reaching its top, you find a courtyard and the U-shaped palace complex sitting upon the outline of the second castle with a Catholic and Protestant chapel at each end. Entering the building through the watchtower, you reach the ancestry hall with the wall paintings showing the Hohenzollern family tree. From there, you can go to the Count's Hall, covering the entirety of the castle's southern wing and boasting elaborate rib vaulting held up by columns of red marble. Nearby, there is a library with murals showing the history of the Hohenzollerns, and among the private quarters is the Queen's Room, filled with portraits of family members. There is also a treasury which, following the Second World War, was filled with valuable artworks and Prussian memorabilia, like the crown of Emperor Wilhelm II of Germany, made in 1888. Sadly, the builder of the current castle, Frederick William, never lived to see it finished. It has also never been used as a permanent residence, being intended primarily as a showpiece. Today, the castle remains jointly owned by the Prussian and Swabian branches of the House of Hohenzollern, and is one of the most visited castles in all of Europe.